everybody welcome back to my channel well everybody I hope you're all doing all right um it's I can't say that it's a beautiful day because for me here where I am it is a lousy day but nevertheless I hope you're all doing fine and um, I don't really have anything on my agenda for today except for um, getting a few facts straight um, on something that I posted the other day and um, I, I seem to have changed my mind on certain things. First of all, um, I was very pleasantly surprised last night when scanning the internet for news as I always do at night, every night um, when I'm editing my um, videos. And it so happened that I came across um, an article with Julia Wendell's or Maddie McCann's face attached to the article. And so I quickly clicked and found out that um, Julia may in fact be, Julia is the young lady who has been claiming to actually share the identity or be the identity of Maddie, the missing Maddie McCann, who went missing from a holiday um, villa in uh, 2007, uh, just shy of her fourth birthday. And so um, this particular article actually links, and I will try to find it and link it below, um, maybe even take a snapshot of it and put it up here as well. Um, these things have a very nasty way of disappearing. Uh, once bits of truth and discovery are found out, um, I'm not saying anything for sure, but I, I did do um, a personal quick online search and was shocked to find that this missing um, so-called alleged missing person, Julia Wendell, is actually uh, shares the same identical features as a child who went missing in 2011, I believe it is. Now, don't quote me on any of this. Um, this is not speculation. But uh, articles of her parents looking for her and her twin sister, they were fraternal twins, certainly not identical, which is very, um, very, I, I don't know, very unique in its own way. Um, they, there are scabs of pictures and articles about these two missing girls. And so um, we're waiting on the DNA test results from the McCanns. And whatever the results will be, I am sure that Julia made absolutely the right and correct choice in going to request for the McCanns to have a DNA test done because um, it is now inevitable that the truth will be sought out and the truth will be found. The reason why I say this is because the McCanns have had to um, do a, a great many other test results in, in the past for similar missing children. And, you know, so many missing children have been found, but not nearly as enough. And what I found particularly disturbing, guys, was the fact that Julia, um, re very recently, in the past week or so, has been claiming that the police refused to help her. Well, um, her parents will not hand over her birth certificate. Now, can you imagine living as an adult person without a birth certificate? How can you live? You need a birth certificate to do stuff. She is so absolutely right in correcting this horrible position to be in um, that her parents are forcing her to recognize as life. That's not life. That's drudgery. And so um, regardless of the um, results of the DNA test, I, I, you know, 
I am hoping that they bring her closer to the truth. And um, when when I found out that the police refused to help her, um, why? Because she doesn't have proof that her parents won't give her? I don't understand that. Um, I, I really hope that the truth is found to the extent where she has a very viable lawsuit against the police station who have been refusing to assist in this matter. It's a very high profile matter. No matter what they say or do, they can't change that. And so guys, now you can understand why um, I have such a fury against um, grown adult men who actively participate in human trafficking. And that, unfortunately, is my perspective on uh, the police's rejection of her reports and their insistence on covering up for um, human traffickers. That's basically what they did. And so can you wonder why um, human trafficking exists on as grand a scale as it does in this world when we have men like that running institutions? How can you wonder? I don't have to think about it. And so everybody, I am, you know, I'm not, I, I, I understand that it hasn't been confirmed yet. And this article was very brazen and deliberately linked. And that's why it's so important that international journalists work together because they will have the stories of other missing children in different parts of the world than we do. It's very important for journalists to form and and police to form a, a very um, constructive and informative community and network and not do what was done to the McCanns. And, you know, people are speculating all over the internet. Even if the McCanns had some knowledge of what happened to Maddie McCann, um, it's very hard for me. It's very incredible for me to believe that with all this BS that's going on. Um, you know, all these cover-ups. Why are all these cover-ups so necessary? Was payment accepted as favor to cover up for people? Tell me. Somebody out there, tell me. Because uh, to do something that is so very outrageously and deliberately unethical and illegal as to help a couple snatch children or a child because actually um, this child um, who I won't name allegedly had a twin sister named Alessia. So it's Livia and Alessia Shep who have gone missing in 2000, I believe it was 2011, and I believe that they were six years old. And so everybody, uh, I know that this woman, Julia, Julia, we, we don't know for sure now if she's Livia, Maddie, Julia, poor girl. How can you live like that? And those horrible people who snatched her, well, they shouldn't be walking the, the, the whoever they are. I'm not saying it was the, the people who are the alleged parents, but whoever they are, if it's some ring that snatches children with that coloboma defect in the eye, there's something crappy going on here. What the heck is it? Children born with certain defects are not toys they're not rats they're beautiful human beings and they don't deserve to be snatched for any purpose whatsoever and for anybody to have suggested that the mccanns took part in the abduction of their own child they have to be crazy 
They have to be the snatchers themselves. And I believe that it's not one or two people involved. I think it's a whole network of criminals doing this. How else could they have been so carefully uh, kept hidden all these years? And I'm so hoping, guys, that this discovery, if it in fact is what the article claimed it to be, um, Alessia and Livia Shep, snatched at six years old, I believe it was, I hope that this leads to the discovery of Maddie McCann because it's too close, guys. Something has to give, something has to explode. They're too close. The McCanns look so much like, um, like the, like Julia, like Maddie. It's too close. Something here has to explode all over the world in, in, in truth and discovery because there's something going on here. There's something fishy going on here. You know, I smell a great big rat. Don't you? Supposedly, um, the gentleman who is Julia's father, um, a German man, was involved in the investigation, meaning so that he was not an investigator. He was being investigated for the kidnapping of Maddie McCann. So, should we go back and look at him again? Who knows? Um, I don't know what happened. Uh, how did somebody link him up to Maddie in the first place? And people are asking Julia to answer this. Well, how the heck can she know? She doesn't remember anything. Um, even if she were Maddie, she wouldn't be able to remember. She was a baby. Um, how can you expect a child to know if the police don't know? Guys, come on, wake up. The enabling of criminals to continue to participate in worldwide scams. Yes, this is a scam. And I'm not talking about Julia or the McCanns. This is a scam by criminal rings to perpetuate more crime and more uh, evasions of the law and um, whatever have you. I, I, I don't care what you think or say. I, I know that police in various levels all over the world are helping actively, knowingly. So don't come to me and say I'm full of BS because I'm seeing it with my own eyes. Another thing about Julia that she absolutely did the right thing in going to the McCann's for the DNA test is because she knew, she knew, even though she can't recollect, she sensed deep down that she had such a connection with Maddie, she actually thought she was her. And in my last video discussing Julia, I did also make that, you know, assumption that she was crying out for help. Of course, she should cry out for help. She needs it. She can't stay in the situation she is in right now. It's unspeakable. And so what I'm trying to say is, if you go back and look at the online pictures, the photos and images of Alessia, maybe not so much Alessia, because Alessia was the fraternal twin, but Livia, Julia, who is allegedly, maybe, perhaps, and probably, and likely, um, Livia looks so much like Maddie in my perspective. Now, you can tell clearly when you're looking at them up close, they are different children. Maddie actually went missing at three. So she doesn't compare that well with a six-year-old's face. However, the resemblance, even at five and six, of Livia and Maddie is pretty striking to me. And okay, the coloring is 
a little off. And you can tell uh, by the later pictures of uh, Julia with her father, she had been greatly altered, her hair. And I, I, I don't know how they did it, but she did not look like Livia anymore. So this is what I'm saying, guys. When a child doesn't know who she is, then nobody's going to come forth and report anything. It's very hard to tell when a child has had their appearance altered, especially if they move halfway across the world, or if they have their hair dyed, or if they had a, 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 a head injury deliberately to knock the sense out of them, and maybe hopefully memories of their past life. Oh, I, I can't begin to imagine the horrible things that this poor girl and other missing children had to endure for the sake of nasty criminal adults. And so I'm going to post images of uh, Julia and Aless um, Livia together and Maddie and Livia and even um, Livia's mother hugging the twins. Um, I, I think those pictures are so Oh my God, they, they, they fit together like a puzzle. I can't believe it. I, I can't imagine how it's gone on. For how many years has it been since 2011? Guys, this is shameful. This is shameful. Now, this isn't a criticism, but what I find 10 times more shameful is the investigation team that investigated this German man uh, regarding the disappearance of Maddie McCann. Now, how freaking ridiculous is that? Now, is it customary for police to say and investigators to say, oh, well, not concerned with Maddie, that's it. He's clear. No, that's ridiculous. How can a man suspected of child abuse and kidnapping of, of children and probably, I'm pretty sure, trafficking be automatically clear? He's not. He's not. Regardless of his connection to Livia, Julia, Alessia, Maddie, regardless. The investigation is not over, guys. Get to work. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Um, I'm going to link the photos here, and I'm going to um, try to get that article linked below as well. And I, I don't want to be proclaiming anything here except really ridiculous police tactics. I, I don't understand it. And I don't give a crap about human rights at this point. When you're investigating a high profile case like this, you don't back off in fear. You do your job. And if laws are interfering, change them. So um, I will do my best to try to piece all the information that I have side by side, just so everybody um, can get in on it because there have been a great many videos posted this past week on this proclamation. And I really think that this girl, Julia, is spot on about so many things. Yes, she needs help, but she's not wrong. And I think she was so clever to remember that this is what she looked like. And she does resemble Maddie, guys. She does. She has that look. Um, it's it's not identical to Maddie, no. Uh, the coloring is off, but in certain light, it, it, it's incredible. It's incredible that this child could have looked so much like Maddie at that age. And I'm not fooling you. Guys, Julia is not off. She's not off about this. She's right on. And so, you know, I have a message for Maddie McCann, uh, whoever and wherever they may be. Please, and Julia, 
and Alessia and Livia and all the missing children. Um, what you've gone through is inhuman. It's not humane. It's, it's not even good for an animal to go through that. Um, and I hope that you manage to find the strength to hang on, hang on. And to Julia, um, those DNA results may not be the ones that you expect, but you will be helped, be patient, and whatever happens, don't give up. If this is not going to lead to any, any miraculous discovery, don't give up. Don't give up. Um, you did the absolute right thing. I don't care what anybody says. And I know that you were abused. I know that big grown-up idiots helped you um, go through that abuse. And so I, I believe that in order for them to come to justice, you have to keep doing this. You have to keep doing this and... Don't let hate get you down because whenever you see something about hate, why would hate enter the picture? Unless they're part of the criminal ring that put you in the position that you now find yourself in. So don't give up. Don't get disappointed. Don't get scared. I know it's easy for me to talk and sit here and say that, but you must be in such a difficult place right now. I don't know how you are coping. I, I wish that there was some sort of support. I know that you have a, a psychologist or a psychiatrist that you'll need, but I don't want you to let anybody push you down the wrong path and try to make you believe that this is all a figment of your imagination. If you ever see that, turn around and run the other way. And one more word on the detective that led the investigation in Portugal. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't begin to imagine why he was so invested in finding the McCann's guilty. Why? In a country that doesn't really regard pedophiles as very serious criminals. Why? I, I don't understand it. There was no fucking evidence at all. Not just of the McCann's guilt, but at all. And were all the tourists... You know, this is one important point that I forgot to mention the other day. Um, the night that Maddie supposedly went missing... Um, and I do believe she went missing on the day that it was reported and not on another night like everybody wants us to think. Um, there was an event going on at the hotel for outsiders to come in and participate in. And for the life of me, they deleted that article. Why? Why? And just where was that Scientologist ship docked when it went to Portugal? Where? How far was it from another, the closest port out? You know what I'm saying? Guys, something here is really wrong. Um, all that investigating, it can't be. It can't be. I don't believe it. I believe that it was missed and investigated and missed. Go back and reinvestigate because that's how you find the truth. And don't look for people who became men or became women. Look for facts. Don't look at other things that don't mean anything. Don't look at fake sightings. The hell with that. Go with something different. Try a new approach. What that is, is up to you. I'm not the cop. You are. So, um, anyway, um, I'll talk to you later.
so everybody um i think i'm gonna make some bread quickly and um if you want to watch uh that's fine with me but i want to get it out of the way before we um have a little discussion later on about pcos and some of the vitamins and minerals involved in its treatment Hi guys, I figured since I'm at it, I may as well make myself a small, just a little tiny pizza.
my pizza is looking and smelling fabulous and I better get to it. Um, so I, I was thinking that after dinner we could talk a little bit about PCOS uh, for those of you who are interested in finding more about it. And um, so uh, give me a little while and I'll be getting back to you. Hi guys, so um, are we all set for a little discussion on PCOS? Um, I'd like to get started on it because it's pretty important. So here we go. All right, so um, let's start with um, the exact causes of PCOS in women. It's actually, obviously, um, a female illness because, or a female condition because it um, resides in the area of the ovaries. Um, so PCS, PCOS is actually caused by three or four different things, but the exact cause um, internally, what the process is that isn't being done correctly, is not quite researched well enough yet. So um, some of the causes can be heredity, excess insulin, excess androgen, which is a male hormone, and um, that's it. Uh, we don't know what else it could be. So, um, factors, okay. Um, let's say um, excess androgen, for example. Um, ovaries produce uh, an at, untypical high amount of um, androgen or male hormone that results in um, excessive fail facial hair and probably acne and maybe even hair thinning on the scalp. And so heredity, um, certain genes might be linked to PCOS. Uh, we don't know. It probably is. It probably is. In a great many um, health conditions, heredity plays a big factor in that. Um, excess insulin. Insulin is a hormone that is produced. It's not the medication insulin that I'm talking about right now. It's a gland that produces insulin. And so um, it is produced in the pancreas and that hormone allows cells in your body to use glucose or the um, energy source of your body, the fuel the carbohydrates and so um if cells resist the action of um insulin blood sugar levels rise and body and the body will produce um more insulin and so that's where you get all the health problems that is one um great big factor in the development of pcos in women and so it's a problem, that one. That one is a problem. Um, insulin resistance can also lead to type 2 diabetes, which also comes along with other health issues. And so um, those health issues affect the circulatory, nervous, and immune systems. Insulin resistance is not only a symptom of PCOS. Um, it is actually an ultimate cause of hormonal imbalance in your body. So, guys, um, I would get to a doctor if you fall into the PCOS category. And again, I'm not going to be going over symptoms because that's going to scare people. Um, symptoms are run of the mill. They could mean anything anyway. So talk with your doctor. The best way to track it down is to have a blood test. Um, so, um, also uh, another um, cause of uh, PCOS is it could be a low-grade inflammation somewhere in your body. Um, so women with PCOS um, do have this low-grade inflammation that can stimulate the polycystic ovaries to produce androgens. Now, 
Uh, what I didn't define very clearly enough is that PCOS, although it is um, located, the disease area is located in the ovaries, the um, symptoms are, now you're going to know one symptom, are little cysts. They could be benign or they could be malignant. So um, that the women with uh, low grade inflammation, it causes those little polycystic ovaries to produce the male hormone androgen. Hmm. And so that, that um, male hormone can lead to heart and blood vessel problems. So um, not too good. And so um, we're going to get to supplements uh, in a minute. I, I would say right now that uh, generally the vitamin B complex has been the most popular and helpful for women with PCOS. And so um, let's, let's start getting into um, more discussion about what PCOS is. And so, okay. Um, some of the symptoms, I'm not going to tell you all of them, but I've already um, discussed acne, um, insulin resistance, which is hard to pinpoint. You're not going to know when you're insulin resistant, but symptoms are going to be able to tell you and a blood test will tell you. Um, and a doctor will be able to tell you, judging from your symptoms. Um, it may take a while to track it down. So um, you need to be patient with this stuff, guys, because uh, it, it's not easy to pinpoint one disease to a, a specific set of symptoms. And so be patient and do the tests, do the blood test, whatever have you, and get to the bottom of it. Um, so um, insulin resistance, acne, um, irregular menstrual cycles. That's all part of it, guys. Don't you hear these women um, who are, are trying to become pregnant saying that I never had a regular menstrual cycle. That was even me. Um, for the first 10 years of my uh, womanhood, I never had it. I had it twice a year. You know what I mean? I don't know if I have PCS. Um, it could be that I do. Um, but this solution, you know, supplements. When you're trying to find a solution through supplements, it's very confusing, isn't it? You don't know where to start. You need a doctor. You need a doctor. And, um, you know, you go to the drugstore and you look at the shelves and you see all these bottles and you talk to the pharmacists and they have three or four different ideas for you, go to a doctor, you know. They can prescribe something specific for you and make it a lot easier. So um, anyway, um, a little more about PCOS. Um, it is actually also known as the polycystic ovarian syndrome. And it is actually quite a common hormonal imbalance. Um, that's how you can essentially describe it in a very tiny phrase, hormonal imbalance. And so it affects over 12% of women in USA. And um, women with PCOS have higher levels of, as I discussed before, male hormone, which is called androgen. And um, so... Irregular periods, acne, uh, thinning hair, excessive hair on the face, insulin resistance, weight gain. Weight gain could be anything, though. Um, those are some of the common symptoms, but they're very, very, also very general and one of the male symptoms, too. It could be anything. So that's why you need to get this checked out medically, if that's what you're going through. Um, women with PCOS... Um, develop health problems if they are overweight. And so most women who have PCOS are overweight. Um, 
And some of those problems include diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, and stroke. <laughs> Am I not just a ray of sunshine here? Um, I, I really shouldn't be talking about the symptoms. Um, the implications and symptoms of PCOS, as I said before, are pretty common. In, but just because you ex you actually are diagnosed with PCOS, um, it doesn't mean that your health is going to go downhill from then on. It's not. It's not. Um, it, it's not anything to do with life expectancy. It's um, it has a lot to do with reproduction and um, weight loss, like weight gain, whatever. But um, you know, it's not going to be the end of the world if you have PCOS. You need to learn how to deal with it and live with it, and try to get around it if you want to stay and remain fertile. So um, it's not easy to do. Maybe once, maybe twice. It's not easy to um, be fertile when you when you have PCOS. It's tricky, and so um, there are ways to naturally treat PCOS, and that is through vitamins and uh, diet and lifestyle. And so, um, okay, you must be asking by now, what should I eat? What should I take? Well, um, I. For this part of the discussion, I, I think I'm, I'm leaving, for the most part, food out of it because food, um, this is about a deficiency, okay, as we'll find out as we go along. And so food, I think whatever food that you intake, your body's not going to do what it should do with it. So um, I'm talking about the specific vitamin that is um, beneficial to um, the issue that I'm talking about. Um, the, um, oh my God, my mind is drawing a blank here. The ovaries and, and the um, PCOS and the insulin, you need to uh, very likely supplement. And so the supplements include, there are seven of them, guys. Um, B-complex, that's the best and most popular one. Zinc, inositol, which is B8. Um, and I hear that B6 folate is also very, very beneficial. Um, vitamin D, fish oils and omega-3. Berberine, which is an herb, and magnesium. Okay, so um, let's get started with this. Oh my God. You know when you have hair in your mouth and your eyes? It's just everywhere, guys. Okay, um, <laughs> finding quality and safe supplements that are just right for you is, is not only important, but it's not easy to do that. So you probably have to go and see a specialist. Um, so um, the, the thing about supplements is that the National Sanitation Foundation, which is known as NSF, um, and the United States Pharmacopeial Convention, USP, need to certify vitamins they need to both certify vitamins in order to, um, you know, in order for you to know that it's good. So what the, what is being stressed here is that you should not, um, if you don't see that certified label on a vitamin, because in the in the United States, um, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration does not test or approve any supplements um, and a lot of other things too before they're, they're being marketed. So you have to remember that, especially if you're buying things over the counter that are shipped from the United States. They're not going to not always have that little seal on it. So um, you have to 
make choices here and hopefully they're going to be the right ones that's another reason why you should always see a doctor okay so um that being said let's start with inositol inositol vitamin b8 which i spoke on last week is a carbocyclic sugar in foods it exists naturally in foods like fruits beans nuts animal protein and grains um inositol has antioxidant um properties and so it used to be considered a vitamin but has since then been declassified because most people do make it oh i finally got that hair out of my mouth um most people make it internally most of us do uh however women who have been diagnosed with pcos should know that they will not make enough inositol in their system and so they do need to supplement now if you're trying to become pregnant you need to know this you need to really understand that your body is not going to be hip hop happy with just a few vegetables that it's going to need that supplement coming from a bottle or an injection i don't know whichever way you want to take it i don't know if inositol is injectable <laughs> but oh that would creep me out so um anyway pcos is a metabolic condition as well so this is what i'm trying to say um it's it's not going to be in your system it, it's it's not getting broken down by the foods that you take in properly it's it's probably vanishing it's not going to be enough guys and so um it, this pcos condition is aggravated by inflammation like i just said and so um insulin resistance and androgen levels um that are increased make it all the worse and so a uh, myo and dichiro inositol work in a complex set of reactions that help um run your metabolism very efficiently and so um they are also quite important to the reproductive pathways that you will need to find when you're trying to become pregnant and they assist in the regulation of insulin levels so myo and d chiro inositol those are the two um inositol um inositol lowers the your if your insulin levels become very high inositol lowers it and it improves blood sugar levels in women with pcos and um there are two ways that it does this um inositol lowers tes testosterone levels in in the body and the female body and secondly it takes six months to see positive effects of inositol on androgen profile people with androgen and acne like people with androgen hormone high androgen hormone levels and acne the way i take notes it's um unbelievable here um i i cut down the sentence to a bare minimum um so uh when is the best time that you should take inositol um two hours before or after eating not during food not during meals okay so that's inositol we've got that one cleared out of the way vitamin d so uh 42 percent of north americans are deficient in vitamin d and supplementation with pcos improves uh, menstrual regularity after only three months it improves fertility pregnancy rates and um especially during assisted reproduction therapy vitamin d supplementation improves mood and reduces depression in women with and without pcos so that's good to hear um i wonder what about men 
maybe it's not good for men to, you know, take an acetal, I don't know. Um, vitamin D, I should say, I don't know. Um, no, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that those, it's just that they're specifically speaking about women with P PCOS, and so they naturally wouldn't be including men in this discussion. So, when to take uh, vitamin D supplements with food and not before or after, with food and high fat foods such as salmon, avocados, and nuts. Oh, that sounds good. And all right, next supplement, vitamin B complex, um, such as B12, B6, B8, um, B9, but B6 and, and B8 spe specifically are, are used to treat uh, PCOS naturally. So um, B, B6 is a very powerful supplement that regulates your moods. Wow. Um, that is so interesting. It produces serotonin and dopamine. Remember I was talking about that the other day? That are essential for happiness and contented feelings. So, while B12 aids mood regulation, um, supplementation is also important to offset the effects of metformin, uh, a PCOS medication, which reduces B12 levels. Okay, so when do you take the vitamin B complex supplement? Two hours before or after meals and not during. Okay, fish oils and omega-3 fatty acids. So fish oil supplements are very heavily seeped in omega-3s. Fish-based omega-3s um, are much better in treating PCOS than plant-based um, plant omega-3s. Uh, we did go over that way back. We did go over the omega-3 beans and stuff like that. Um, that was interesting too. So, um, omega-3s are very powerful due to their anti-inflammatory properties. When treating in inflammatory and autoimmune conditions, omega-3s um, also result in decreased disease activity, and lowered use of anti-inflammatory drugs. So omega-3 is good, but what does it do specifically for PCOS and its symptoms? Well, fatty acids fight insulin resistance and treat high levels of blood cholesterol. Omega-3 tablets fortify natural omega-3 sources. Fish, salmon, mackerel, herring, nuts, walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds, plant oils, canola, flax seed, and walnut oil. When to take this supplement with food when you're eating? Berberine. Berberine is an alkaloid extracted from herbs. It's an herb. And it's taken in liquid or a capsule form. And so um, when it comes to naturally treating PCOS, it improves the insulin resistance through better signal transduction. Wow. So it reduces the secretion of the hormone leptin, which really, it makes you hungry. It stimulates your appetite. So losing weight when taking berberine extracts will make it, will be easier. Um, because um, various cravings that you will have will be um, suppressed and reduced. And the enzyme in lipoprotein lipase is inhibited at the same time. Um, that's responsible for fat storage. So, berberine, I have to try that. Um, uh, so, 
That is so interesting. Apart from these effects on the metabolic implications of PCOS, berberine improves fertility. Well, what do you know? Um, so when do you take this supplement? Before meals. Before meals, not with meals. Before. Magnesium. Magnesium is a cofactor of enzyme, enzymes that are involved in glucose metabolism and with type 2 diabetes. So um, there is lower intracellular magnesium concentration uh, when you take magnesium. Magnesium-rich foods are spinach, cashews, almonds, pumpkin seeds, and whole grains, nuts, seeds, beans, and legumes are all high in magnesium. But not all supplements are created equally. Some forms are, are better processed than others by the human body. So always opt for a magnesium citrate or magnesium glycinate and avoid magnesium oxide. Don't take oxide um, because magnesium oxide has a low absorption rate in the human body. So if you do increase the magnesium intake through foods, do not supplement. It's going to be too much. So guys, this is a lot to remember. I, I don't know if I could ever do this. Um, so when do you take the supplement? It's, this one's easy. You can take it anytime. Okay, now I think we're working our way down to the last um, supplement, which is zinc. Zinc is a very critical micro element that regulates cell growth, hormone release, reproduction, and immunological response. Women with PCOS have lower levels of zinc. Women with PCOS, see, they can sense um, these symptoms of impaired hormonal lipid glucose. My cat is staring at me. Um, metabolism. at me because I'm sitting in a chair. <laughs> um, so anyway, um, where was I? Um, women with PCOS have low levels of zinc and so um, they will see their hormonal um, activity as impaired. Um, lipid and glucose metabolism are increased concentrations of oxidative stress biomarkers. So low levels of zinc means risk for insulin, insulin resistance, oxidative stress, and impaired hormonal metabolization. So um, those are three pretty important things for the human body. And to function without a lot of zinc it, it it doesn't it doesn't work out that well. Um, zinc has a positive effect on insulin resistance and lipid balance, and so um, it fights insulin resistance, which is of the utmost importance. Um, when dosed before and during each menstrual cycle, it reduces the intensity of cramps. Woo! I didn't know that. Um, Zinc fights acne, reduces inflammation, prevents hair loss, protects against chronic conditions like heart disease and diabetes. Wow, well, I think we're done. And so I hope that you have enjoyed watching me make my little pita breads and my pizza and um, listening to me talk about um, the Mary McCann update, which is actually could be potentially the Livia Shep update. Um, I certainly hope she will be found. Um, whoever Julia is, I hope that she 
is reunited with her true loved ones. Um, guys, I can't begin to tell you how this case has made me see the light of day and so many different things, but I, I don't want to get into that anymore because I get upset. And then I have these weird dreams. So um, I am praying for Maddie. I am praying for Livia. And I am praying for her sister, Alessia. And especially for Julia, because she is the one who endured. She endured all these, you know, conditions of abuse. When a child suffers trauma, they forget. It may be that she might have a split personality. I don't know, but I certainly want her and her family to become reunited. I know she's missing, guys. I know she's a missing person. We just have to find out which set of people she went missing from. And I think maybe um, because when children go missing, there's a DNA bank um, that automatically matches children up when they are found. This shouldn't be that big of a complex deal. I, I know that investigations need to be undergone, but um, I hope that whoever took her and whoever took Maddie, probably, maybe it's the same people. Guys, it's the, the, the situations are similar. She has coloboma like Maddie. It can't be a coincidence, a random coincidence. It can't be. It can't, now I understand why um, in the Maddie case, detectives were urging people to be on the lookout for that ID defect because they are victims. I think they are victims of, of kidnapping and horrible abuse. I, I don't understand why. Um, and I don't want to go there, but I hope that Julia does not give up hope no matter what happens, because I think that she is way too smart to um, walk away from this without knowing anything. Um, she really, she really has it on the ball, guys. Um, she, um, she knew she was missing. She, I mean, being wanting to identify with Maddie is as good as it gets. You got to know that you're missing if you identify with Maddie. You got to know that. So um, anyway, I'm going to be scouring the internet tonight for more news on this high profile and very bizarre case. Thank you so much for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.